Hi everyone, I am Shante with Fit Tate Eats and today I decided to do um, carrot cake pancakes. So of course it's going to be my typical and normal protein pancakes and as I've always stated, I always use Kodiak cakes as a base for my pancake mix. Now I have made pancakes from scratch but trying to get the right amount of protein in there sometimes can be difficult. So like if I know if I want to eat a certain amount of protein with my breakfast, sometimes that can be a little tricky because you have to know uh, what the ratio of uh, protein mix to flour or how much flour you want to take out or other things that you can possibly put into your mix to um, increase the protein content. So I figured why not just use the Kodiak cakes? They've already perfected their recipe. So I'm going to take advantage of it. So I actually had to go to the store this morning. So I ran to Target and I actually picked up the buttermilk pancakes. So I mentioned this in my yesterday video when I made the red velvet protein pancakes. So uh, I went ahead and picked up some buttermilk. So now I will be using this as my base versus I think what did I have yesterday? The honey and oats. Um, so Believe it or not, I already have everything kind of measured and weighed out so you will not have to see me with my food scale. So this is my 53 grams of pancake mix. And Kodiak cakes, they actually have 14 grams of protein per serving. So a serving size is 53 grams of the mix. So it has 14 grams of protein per serving, two grams of fat, 190 calories, uh, 30 grams of carbs, a little bit of sugar, um, three grams, five grams of fiber, 380 milligrams of sodium, and 10 milligrams of cholesterol. So to do the carrot cake pancakes, and of course this is the first time that I'm doing this one as well, such as the red velvet from yesterday, uh, I've already grated up some baby carrots. So what I did, I took three baby carrots and just grated them with my hand grater until I couldn't grate anymore. So it's not the full three baby carrots in here uh, because I can only grate so far before I would start like getting down to the point where I couldn't hold it anymore. So this came out to be about 20, 22 grams or whatever. Oh, and I forgot to grab my almond milk. Let me get that. We're gonna need some type of liquid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start adding in, oh, also uh, I have chia seeds that I'm adding in. Now chia seeds will give you uh, a good source of fiber. So this is another way to get in some good fiber. Um, it also has, it's also a good source of protein. So in addition to the 14 grams that I'm getting here, so I'm gonna get the full 14 grams here. Now with the chia seeds, uh, according to the nutrition facts on uh, for Simply Nature, so that's who these are by, and I think I got these from Aldi. Um, their serving size is two tablespoons, which is 30 grams. So I only did, I think, I only did like a teaspoon. So that would be five grams. So it actually gave me quite a bit. And they're so small, so it takes more, of course, to get the amount that you need. So I didn't want to over overkill my, um, my batter. I love this. Uh, this is... Um, by Terra Soul. It's organic, unsweetened, shredded coconut flakes. I love this. I've been eating this for, for quite a while. Uh, it's a big bag. I'm the only one that eats it in the house, but I've, well, this is my second bag. So it's, it takes me a while. So yeah, I've been eating it for a while. Now, coconut flakes, it's also a pretty decent source of fiber. Of course, you don't get as much as you would uh, with the chia seeds, but I'll leave a description, uh, or not a description, but a link in the description box below of where I purchased this as well as my other ingredients. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually start adding in um, some of my dry stuff. So I have nutmeg and ground cinnamon because if you've ever made a carrot cake or even ever tasted carrot cake, usually cinnamon and nutmeg would be part of the spices that are added in. Now I'm not gonna weigh this out. Um, I do have a fourth of a teaspoon, so I was going to do it maybe anywhere between a fourth to a half a teaspoon. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. Um, I know some people that does not like nutmeg, so it's you don't have to use nutmeg, and if you don't like cinnamon or one or the other, you don't have to use that. But if you like carrot cake, then you probably like both. 
so I'm just kind of eyeballing it I don't want to like overkill with anything and I would say what I'm putting in here is roughly between a fourth and a half a teaspoon so definitely do this to your liking whatever your palate prefers and I'm just gonna mix this up no whisk today I'm just opting for a spoon I always like to make sure I get all of my dry ingredients mixed in and incorporate it really well. A whisk will probably do better, but I'm just spooning it. I mean, it's such a small amount. This is just for me, it's just a serving size. So now I'm gonna proceed with adding in my coconut flakes. Now, um, with carrot cake, it can be made different ways. Some people add um, crushed pineapple. So you can also add crushed pineapple to your batter. So after you would get your batter all you know, and everything incorporated, I would probably, I would put the crushed pineapples in last. And that's the same thing I'm gonna actually do with the um, shredded um, coke, um, carrots. So I'm gonna add in some, some of my, um, this is actually a teaspoon, so five grams of my coconut flakes. I'm gonna actually do a little bit of pecans. This entire little bit of pecans here that I pre-crushed, um, this is, 14 grams. So that's actually a half a serving from what the bag says. Yes, I told you guys that I weigh everything. By all means, don't feel like you have to weigh things. I just like to let people know exactly what I'm using, just in case you want to make it exactly how I'm making it. However, I will be putting quantities and um, the entire uh, ingredients in the description box below. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the pecans in here. And I'm gonna leave a little bit in the bag for uh, garnish so after they're done. I'm gonna actually turn my eye on. I already have my griddle pre-greased. I showed in the video yesterday that I just use regular uh, cooking spray. Usually it's olive oil. Every now and then I might get the canola oil, but usually I use an olive oil cooking spray and just spray it on. Um, chia seeds. And I'm just going to get all of this incorporated and mixed together so it can be evenly throughout my mix, my dry mix. Now I'm going to start adding in my wet ingredients. I actually like to add in, um, so this is vanilla flavor. So um, you can use an imitation vanilla extract or a pure. I actually make my own van vanilla extract and this is a teaspoon so five grams so I make my own because it's just more cost efficient and the reason I started doing it was because I owned an online bakery so I used to bake a lot I used to also do vendor shows so doing all of that I ran through a lot of vanilla extract and if anybody out there purchases vanilla extract, you will know you don't get a lot for your money. So I'm just kind of eyeballing liquid as well. I know what consistency I want my pancakes to be. And if you're used to making pancakes, you should know what a good consistency for pancakes would be. Of course, the more dry items you put in, you will have to compensate your liquid. So, you know, something like this, you definitely need more liquid to be added in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my um, carrots. You know, and I came up with this with this uh, recipe kind of at the last minute. So last night I was thinking like, hmm, do I want to do a video today? Are they, you know, do I want to do another pancake video? I guess you guys are probably wondering like, she must love pancakes. Well. I'm not very versatile when it comes to my breakfast foods, so I don't eat pork. Um, so usually for breakfast meat, I'm eating either turkey sausage or turkey bacon. Uh, there's also beef bacon, but not a lot of stores sell it, and it's really expensive. Like, it's more expensive than your regular pork bacon, and it's probably because it came from the cow. But it is very good, and it does have that pork bacon similar taste and smell. So, like, yeah, at some point in time, I did eat pork. Um, I stopped eating it 
I want to say maybe my junior year of high school. I don't remember exactly, but it's been a long time and I've been out of high school for a good little while. So I stopped eating it. It wasn't for any one particular reason. It was just to do something. I don't know why. I just wanted to try it and I did it and I stuck with it. Usually when I try certain things or I decide that I'm going to do this or that, I tend to stick with it. Oh, by the way, I'm not adding like any additional sugar or anything like that in here. I have to, I actually have uh, cream cheese frosting. So if you've ever had carrot cake or made carrot cake or have seen carrot cake, usually it's uh, frosted with cream cheese frosting. Now, that may be preference to some people. I know some people may use just basic buttercream. I have seen carrot cake with basic buttercream. Like I said, I used to bake for years and had my online bakery. I can't stand buttercream frosting. It is the grossest thing ever. I mean, just the taste, the texture. I think it's great to decorate cakes and cupcakes and all of that stuff, but the taste, I cannot get down with it. I don't know what it is. And people would laugh at me like, wait a minute, you bake, but you don't like frosting? I'm like, no, I, I certain frostings I will eat. Like if I make a caramel cake, I'm going to eat the caramel. Cream cheese frosting, I'll eat that. But when it comes to like buttercream, I cannot do it. Um, German chocolate cake, I love German chocolate cake. I'll eat that. But I can't, I don't know what it is about the darn buttercream. It's just, it's well, first off, when you make buttercream, you're using obviously butter or you can use ve vegetable shortening. So just like regular lard type of shortening. It's just something about the taste of that. And um, even if it was with the straight butter, you can just do straight butter. I just, I don't like it. So my griddle should be pretty hot here. So I'm just gonna put this on here. So this is actually a little bit more um, mixed than normal. And that's because I've added so much other stuff to it. So usually I don't get this much. So like if I were to, and as you can see, if you can see this, hopefully you can see this. I explained in my video yesterday that um, I ha I'm using my iPhone. So I have an iPhone 10 and I'm using that because I just didn't like the quality of my camera. So I have this, um, what, what brand is it? Not Nikon or whatever it's called. I actually had got it as a gift, but I'm not crazy over it as far as doing videos like this. So if I was just doing something leisurely, like out and about, you know, my own little thing or at home or whatever, you know, maybe recording, whatever, that would be fine. I'm just not too big on, um, I'm not very big on how it does with recording videos like this. So when I do videos and I'm especially a tutorial or something like that, I want the audio to be great. I want the, want the, uh, the picture quality to be great. And the iPhone um, 10 is perfect for that. Um, I've had a total of what, three iPhones? I've had a lot of Apple products, but as far as iPhones, I've only had three. So my mobile carrier, my cellular carrier is uh, T-Mobile and it took them forever to get the iPhone. I was so pissed. I felt like I was the only person without an iPhone. So I think it was in 2013. Yeah, 2013, I believe. They finally, or maybe it was 2012, 2012 or 13. Whatever, they finally upgraded their um, their network to support the iPhone. So that's why they didn't have it. So they didn't have the, the appropriate functionality to support the iPhone. Finally, they got it. I swear, I used to call them all the time like, uh, you know, are you all getting the iPhone? Like I was almost tempted to leave T-Mobile because of that. And the only reason I didn't is because when I started to compare prices, I just felt like Verizon was just ridiculous. And I wasn't a big fan of Sprint. Uh, I've had them in the past and I wasn't a big fan. And I'm like, well, that, I, I don't really have many cellular carriers to, to choose from. So, oh, and then there's AT&T. I think they still have cellular service. I wasn't a big fan of them either because I've had them in the past. So um, at the end of the day, I'm like, I might as well just stick with who I have. Why pay Verizon more? You know, I know that they do have better coverage or at least more, maybe more cell towers or something like that. But I'm like, I just need to use the phone, use the internet. Why am I going to pay more for that? As long as I can do it, get, get, get those services when I'm ready to use my phone, wherever I'm at, I'm happy. Like I'm not, I, I don't want to pay more. <laughs> 
So if you're ever confused about whether or not your pancakes are done on one side, because you don't want to prematurely flip them, you just like kind of lift them. Uh, and I'm checking these, I'm usually pretty good at like eyeballing stuff like that, but because I've added so much other stuff in there, I'm being a little bit more cautious with this. So, um, yeah, so like I was saying, so with the iPhone, the clarity of, of the camera is a phenomenal. Like, I love it. The other week, no, what was it? Last week, I was at a real estate event. And the cool thing, I'm taking photos of the screen that's like so far from me. And with my iPhone 5, so I've had an iPhone 5, a 6 Plus, and now the 10. Um, I, I usually don't upgrade my phones until I've paid off one. So that's why, now these are definitely ready to flip. So that's why um, I didn't get any of the S's or whatever, because by the time I ended up paying off my phone, then, you know, something else was already out and I'm like, I don't want to wait on an S series or whatever. So, but I'm taking these photos and they came out super clear. Now I've been at like concerts and plays and different little entertainment events and I'm like I'll, I'll admit it I'm bougie when it comes to getting tickets for an event if I can't sit within the first like few rows then I don't want to see the show at all like I, I will I will definitely admit I am very bougie when it comes to seating uh, that's even just going to the movies I'm like that if I can't get a decent seat like well not at the movies like I'm not I don't want to be all the way in the front because that's stupid to be looking up at the screen like that but I do want a decent seat but I don't want to be way in the back either mm -hmm. but now that they like the theaters by me they've all upgraded to these premium seatings seating so now it's not that many seats in the theater so really with that you can sit wherever but the traditional theater where you get like a lot of rows I'm not sitting all the way in the back and I'm not sitting in the front like I have to have a good seat but a, a, a movie ticket compared to something like a concert or a play no I if, I if I'm going if I can afford to go to the concert or the play I, that means I should be able to afford a decent seat in my eyes I'm just saying for me so in my eyes I should be able to afford a decent seat and get you know a, a pretty you know good seating like I love Tyler Perry plays so when I go see like a Tyler Perry play usually it's like Medea or something like that I need to see, I, I need to be able to see right there in front right there dead smack in the front I want to see if Tyler Perry has a, a, a freaking I, I don't know booger in his nose like seriously like I need to be that close I love the impractical jokers I want to be close I want to know if they have cologne on, I want to be I, I be able to identify that cologne that's how close I need to be like I want to be right there in the front um and it's just like mandatory because I want to be able to see what I'm, what, what I'm paying for and to enjoy the show. I mean, that's why we go to, you know, concerts and stuff like that and entertainment events in general. You want to be able to enjoy your show. I mean, just like if I went to, let's say, see a basketball game or whatever, you know, I'm going to get some. Now, I may not be able, be able to afford courtside tickets because, you know, you see B, uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z sitting there. I may not be able to afford that, but you better believe that I'm going to get some decent seating. And that's for anybody that goes with me. So if you're going with me, you better have the money to get a decent seat. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> you're not going to be the one going with me. So anyway, uh, our pancakes are almost done here. I'm just kind of letting them cook through just a little bit more. Uh, I know some people like the edges to be crispy. I don't care how my pancakes are, as long as they're cooked through thoroughly and they taste good. So I'm gonna grab a plate here. So we can get started on plating. Sorry, I have to walk away. Like I said, if I were to put my camera in a spot so you could see my entire kitchen, I would have to put my tripod back so far you would wonder why am i so far back i can do it so if you all want to see you know more of the kitchen i can do it but just keep in mind that you're going to end up it's going to i have to put it further back like toward my dining room area so yesterday in my video uh, i did a, did the red velvet protein pancakes i mentioned 
in the video um, how, you know, I'm very basic with my breakfasts. And that was how I came up with this whole, you know, I eat the same pancakes, like same flavor pretty much every day. How can I make them a little different? You know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm gonna eat them every day. <laughs> but I'm like wondering like, well, how can I make them a little different? So I just start coming up with different things. The first one I did was, um, I've always like added, depending on the flavor, like I love the dark chocolate as well. Like my first Kodiak cake was cinnamon and oats. And I used to add raisins as well as walnuts to that. Now I, I did have it plain, but then I'm like, okay, well let me add a little bit more. Usually when I add something, I try to add something that'll give me a little extra nutrition value on this or that. So that's the reason why I do it. It wasn't, in the beginning, it wasn't just to change the taste. Uh, but now it's just like, now I just want to explore with this and share it with people. So, oh, but you know what? I got sidetracked. So I was talking about carrot cake and different things you can put in it. So like with the carrots, you can actually put in crushed pineapples in addition to the carrots. So you would do definitely do the carrots because it's carrot cake. Um, but you can do crushed pineapples, you can do um, raisins, or you can do both. Uh, as far as that goes, I would probably do it by the tablespoon. You know, you can eyeball the raisins, just put a few in there. But as far as the, um, like if I were to add um, crushed pineapples to this, I would probably do no more than maybe one or two tablespoons. I wouldn't want it to be like so much because the thing is, I didn't, you have to compensate. If you're adding more liquids, and of course, crushed pineapple is going to be in its own juice. So if you're adding more liquids, you're going to have to compensate with the, with the dry stuff, which means you would have to add a little bit more mix. But as, you know, I would say as this stands, I probably would do maybe one or two um, tablespoons of the crushed pineapple. And then as far as the nuts goes, um, you know, that's optional. Some people have nut allergies. You don't have to do the pecans. You can do, or if you don't like pecans, you can do walnuts, um, do almonds if you want. I've actually seen carrot cake with nuts like um, garnished around the, 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 like around the edges or whatever, the perimeter of the cake. And when I've made a carrot cake before, I think I use walnuts. I did not use pecans, but I have walnuts and pecans. I love nuts, so I'll eat walnuts, pecans, peanuts, cashews, uh, pistachios. Uh, but, but the only thing is, um, and I love almonds, everything has to be unsalted. So I have a very sensitive palate to salty stuff and sweet stuff. So if it's too sweet or too salty, I cannot do it. Like I can taste it a mile away and it's just like, ugh. Now this is my cream cheese frosting that I'm gonna put on here. Uh, basically what I do, I'm not gonna use any syrup. So that's just, you know, I don't want sweet on top of sweet. Like I said, I have a sensitive palate to sweet. And I'm not gonna use all of this. This is about two tablespoons in here. Um, and the reason I put this much in here is because when you're using, um, and I gotta squeeze the air out. So I wanna make sure, you always wanna make sure you squeeze the air out. The reason for that is, like with the pancakes, and I mentioned this yesterday, with the pancakes, really doesn't matter if, if this splats out. But if you were actually decorating a cake, you would not want your frosting to start splatting out when you're in the middle of making a design, which means you would have a piping tip in here to make you know, some type of border or something around the cake or whatever. You do not want it to splat out because then it's gonna mess up your whole pattern, it's gonna mess up your design. So you always wanna make sure you squeeze out any of the air and then push all of your product down. See, and it's starting to drip. Okay, and then you wanna give it a twist and you would just basically hold and then you, you're gonna like just drizzle it on. And I'm just drizzling it on in no certain pattern. I mean, this pancake here is gonna go on top. Now, the only thing I don't have, and you all may be used to this now, if you've seen any of my other videos or photos, because I wasn't always recording. Sometimes I just do a photo. I don't have any whipped topping today. So even though I went to the store this morning, I thought about it before I got to the store, I totally forgot once I got there. And that's because, so yesterday I was so super busy. Um, my son had ran out of bread for his lunch. And I, I was so busy. I got so caught up that I forgot to go get the bread. So when I thought about it, it was like late and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to the store. I'm like, that means I'm gonna have to wake up a little bit earlier 
to go and get this bread. So I got up a little bit earlier, got dressed, um, and I'm like, I might as well just throw my workout clothes on. Yeah, I had workout clothes on in my video yesterday. And that's because usually I like to try to work out um, before a certain time of the day, unless it's my actual workout day with my personal trainer. But um, anyway, so I had to go and get his bread. And then I picked up a few other items. And lo and behold, I did not go to the section where the whipped toppings was. So I figured like, hmm, I don't need anything from down there and wasn't thinking about the whip topping. So you will not see my nice little whip topping in the center. But anyway, um, I'm gonna just continue with the cream cheese frosting here. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, basically, if it's not coming out anymore, you just push it down, you give it a twirl here. Normally, if it was a lot in here, I would just hold the top of the bag. It's not that much, but this is a bigger bag, so. Um, so you can actually hold it just to get it out the way. Um, so basically, that's that. I'm gonna garnish with some more pecans. That whip topping would've looked so cute in the center. I don't have any and I was wondering like if I can make some from scratch um, but I'm like I don't have any heavy whipping cream but I will be garnishing with my powdered sugar and I know yesterday I made mention of um, how I normally have like turkey sausage and egg whites with my breakfast which normally i do it's very rare that i don't and i did make that already so that's actually already made so i actually have to heat it up here because it's gotten cold so anyway so um and i was saying how like so yesterday my pancakes were a little bit smaller because i didn't have all of the additional uh ingredients added in there so i made a comment saying you guys are probably wondering is, is that gonna fill her up what I forgot to mention is I usually have like an AM snack. So uh, I use my fitness pal a lot. If you don't know what my fitness pal is, just go to your app store, whatever phone you have. Um, well, for iPhone, of course, you know, you would go to the app store and for Androids, the Google play store or whatever. Um, but anyway, so I have it set up. Um, so you do, you can record all of your meals there. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, but they have, you can actually customize it more to, you know, I would say your diet or whatever. And I actually have it set up where I have an AM snack, my actual breakfast, a early PM snack, my lunch, then a regular PM snack, and then my dinner. And it works for me. So basically I have three regular meals per day and then three snacks per day. So this morning I had oatmeal with uh, raisins and walnuts and just water. Like I didn't have anything else. Sometimes I might have a boiled egg or I might have a piece of fruit. Like yesterday before I made my red velvet protein pancakes, I actually had uh, a granny smith apple with peanut butter and oh my gosh so there's these um there's these protein drinks i love them i've been drinking these for months as well i don't remember i just i was in walmart one day and i discovered them but walmart stopped selling the coconut flavor so yeah i love coconut so this is it it's powerful drink they actually make a few other items and normally their items are in the area where you can get the yogurt and stuff. And that's where you can get these. Only thing is, this flavor, this coconut flavor, I have not been able to find it in Walmart in months. So now I order from Amazon. So Amazon do carry these. Um, they're probably maybe a little on the expensive side. I don't know. But for what it is, I think it's probably maybe priced right, at least for me. And that's because I'm used to buying stuff like this. So... Uh, I've seen other protein drinks that was way more expensive than this. At Walmart, they're $1.98. Um, at Amazon, you can get a case of 12 for $35. So it's just personal preference. Oh, and this actually has, so it's like a yogurt drink with protein. Um, and it's non-fat. It says filtered water, the ingredients, filtered water, non-fat ultra-filtered milk, 
um, then milk, Greek yogurt, blah, 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 and so on. So anyway, though, it's 160 calories. This is supposed to be about 12 ounces. Uh, it's 20, 20 grams of protein in here, 11 grams of carbs, uh, 11 total sugars, 105 milligrams of sodium, and 20 milligrams of cholesterol. And then the fat is a total of three grams. Two of those grams are saturated fat. And then it has, of course, calcium, uh, potassium in it. But I love these. I pretty much drink like one a day sometimes, most of the time. Um, I don't drink one a day, but it's made with Greek yogurt, made with natural ingredients per the bottle here. Um, they, I think somewhere on here is stated that you did not have to refrigerate it until you open it, but I don't know. I'm a little weird about that. Um, I keep mine in the refrigerator. I don't even take it out of the case that it comes in. It comes in like a little box, like a short little thing, and then like a clear plastic like wrapped around it or whatever, but I don't, um, I don't take it. I keep my stuff in the refrigerator. Like, I think it would be weird to have a milk yogurt drink sit out. So I think that I saw that and I thought that was weird. Um, so this should be nicely heated. So let me let you all get a close up. Like I said, no whip topping today kind of sucks. You know, yesterday I actually forgot to take a photo. I usually like to try to take a photo for like the thumbnail or whatever. And I forgot to take a photo. So guess what I ended up doing? I ended up making a whole nother batch of red velvet protein pancakes. And then I ended up giving them to my son. Because I'm like, I don't want any more pancakes. So this is our end result. Hopefully you all can see that. This is our protein carrot cake pancakes using Kodiak Cakes Power Cakes as our base. This is the buttermilk flavor. I'm gonna grab a fork. You all will notice in my videos, I rarely have like regular utensils and stuff like that. I don't like washing dishes. And even though I have a dishwasher, I don't wanna wash dishes. I just want to be able to recycle whatever I have. Cause you can actually recycle these. Um, I just, I, I, I do not want to have to deal with, um, washing a lot of dishes and if i don't have to use my dishwasher too often i won't do that either i don't know how many of you all have dishwashers so how many of you all do have dishwashers and how many use them because when i first moved into my house i swore up and down i was not going to even touch the dishwasher i had just moved from an, an apartment so i'm like well, why do i need a dishwasher what's the purpose of that like i didn't have one before so in my head i'm like i don't need it and now i'm like I love it. So how many of you all have a dishwasher and you actually use it on a regular basis? So um, this is my full breakfast. Like I said earlier, I actually had um, oatmeal. So this is the remainder of my breakfast. I am gonna eat this. I'm going to let it digest a little bit uh, and then I will be doing my workout. I may actually video a workout. Um, I don't know. I, t I tend to work out in my room. Uh, and the reason that I do that is because like my dumbbells are up there. Um, I have a BOSU that's up there. Uh, what else do I have? I have DVDs. I love Jillian Michaels. I love the, uh, the Biggest Loser DVD. You know, when I first started um, my years ago when I was doing a weight loss journey, I'm no longer trying to lose weight. But years ago when I was, um, I used to, I was a stickler for doing that darn Biggest Loser Volume 1 DVD uh, with Bob Harper. And I still use it to this day. And I love cardio, so that's the thing. I love cardio. So that's one of the reasons that I kind of stick with those DVDs. Um, other than that, if I'm not dealing with the DVD, there's a few apps that I have on my phone. One of them being the Apps app. I love that one too. Uh, the reason being is because... Even though you can't focus just focus just on one part of your body, because as you're when you're doing a workout, I mean you can you can do exercises that will like focus on that part of the body, but you're going to work out other parts of the body as well if that makes any sense. So just because 
I'm doing, you know, if I'm doing dumbbell curls or something like that, there's going to be another part of my body that's going to have to be engaged and activated. And that's also going to be getting a little workout as well. So it's not like I'm only dealing with, you know, biceps or something like that. I learned that years ago. Um, but anyway, so I love the abs thing and it's because it allows me to, I guess, activate or engage this area a little bit more. I would say like out of all, you know, out of like my entire body, like I feel like this is my problem area. Um, and I hate it. Like not, no, don't take it the wrong way. Like I hate that it's a problem area. Like I've kind of gotten over the fact like, oh, I hate my stomach, even though I'll still say it. That's because I'm just used to saying it, but it is a slight problem area for, area for me. And I guess it's just, you know, probably a cluster of things. Um, you know, I've had two kids, even though they're older, but still, you know, with the weight loss, the weight gain, weight loss, weight gain, you know, stuff like that, your skin stretches out. And then as you age, you know, your skin isn't, you know, doesn't have the elasticity as it used to have. So I don't really believe in a lot of gimmicks and tricks to make to make things the way that you might want them to be. It would be nice, but you know, at the end of the day, sometimes you have to take it with a grain of salt and see it is what it is. But I do do, you know, use my um, app, my abs app, and do a lot of like core, you know, ab work workout. Um, I can say, even though, you know, I have like this extra skin here, uh, I mean, there is muscle up underneath there. It's just like extra skin. Of course, you know, it's going to be some fat there still. But um, for the most part, I can say this area has gotten a lot stronger because I used to have issues. Well, I still sort of kind of, well, not as, as, as much, but I had an issue doing a regular sit up. I used to have issues with planks too. And now I can do it with my eyes closed like that. Planks are nothing to me. Um, but I used to have a huge issue with setups, like actually trying to do it. Like just here just wasn't strong enough. It has gotten a lot better. I still have not completed a setup the way that I personally want to do it. But I can easily do like 50 setups and be good. Before, I would like barely be able to make it through 10 setups. So, um, I, I don't know. I love the app. I really, really, really do. Um, I can say, you know, in addition to my workout that I have three days a week with my trainer, the app has helped me tremendously as well as, you know, my DVDs and stuff like that. But any, anytime I work out at home, I'm always starting with that apps app. It's apps app, ABS, just apps, apps app. Um, and actually the icon for the app is like a six pack. No, I'm sorry. It, that's what it's called. It's called six pack. It's an apps app, but it's called Six Pack. I'm so sorry, guys. So the app is called Six Pack. So do not look up anything called, called apps app. It's called Six Pack, and it actually has a six pack. <laughs> so I'm glad I started talking about how the icon looks. It's called Six Pack. Uh, I don't know who who is by. I want to say, um, I don't know. I don't remember. I'll put it in the description box or whatever. But uh, basically, I don't want my breakfast to get cold here. Oh, you know what? I actually did a... Um, I tasted this on camera yesterday. So this is the finished version of everything. So that's my turkey sausage, egg whites, and then the protein uh, carrot cake pancakes. And I am actually gonna get my other phone and take a quick photo because I forgot yesterday. I forgot and I'm like, darn it, you know, I had to like remake a breakfast that, which was fine, my son, he loves pancakes. so. It was totally okay for him like when he was coming in he's like oh what are you doing what are you making and then asked if i was going to make him some i'm like oh good you can have them because i didn't want them anyway because i had already eaten pancakes for the day i have to figure out where i put my other phone so like i said i have a few iphones and i have an iphone 6 somewhere six plus and i can't recall where i put it anyway yeah, it's floating around here somewhere, but I'll take my picture. Oh, there it is. It's in my family room. So, so don't you all hate when that happens? Like, you know, you just recently had something, but you can't remember what you did with it. I do remember I took the phone and my camera and put it in the family room. So just so happened I could see this bright pink case. So I'm just going to take a photo because this is going to be my thumbnail for my YouTube. 
So I just need to get a good angle. I usually like to take a few different photos. So there's actually a light. You might see like a light over here. This is actually the light um, from my microwave. So I, it can actually go dimmer and then just off. But normally I'll keep this on if I need to take a photo because it actually helps with the clarity of the photo. And like I said, I like to do a few different angles just because you never know which shot is going to come out the best. So I'm actually going to take a bite. Hopefully this is tasty. And if it's not, I'll let you all know. Not everything I make is always going to be like a winner. But I usually feel pretty confident only because like I said before, I had an online bakery and I'm basically taking ingredients that um, I've already, you know, that I that I would use in a regular cake and I'm just incorporating them into my pancake. Oh, I forgot to say my grace and I forgot to do that yesterday because I was trying to wrap my video up. Okay. Well, the smell is definitely on point. It's good. I'm getting all of the flavors here. The cinnamon, nutmeg, carrots. It's awesome. So if anyone makes this, let me know how it turned out. Because it's nice to have a fun breakfast. We added some healthy stuff to this. I would say the only thing that's not as healthy would be the cream cheese frosting but you're not really using a lot and there's no need to add any type of pancake syrup or um, breakfast syrup, whatever you want to call it, maple syrup. There's no need to add any of that because you're already getting some sweetness here and they're already nice and moist. So really, the, I would say the one thing that may be the least healthiest will be your cream cheese frosting, but you're only using a little bit. So when you break things down into like a serving size, you're only getting a small portion of whatever that complete nut nutritional facts is. Now to make the cream cheese frosting, I actually use four ounces, so like a half of a brick of cream cheese, a half a stick of butter. I use 180 grams, which is about one and a half cups of confectioner's sugar or powdered sugar, whichever one you refer to, uh, to it as. I use a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. And was that it? Oh, and some almond milk. So I use three tablespoons of almond milk. So in the event that, you know, you do decide to make it, and all of this stuff needs to be room temperature. Um, and the butter, it's met better to melt the butter before you mix it in with the cream cheese. So you would have your cream cheese, make sure it's super soft and room temperature. You would use your melted butter, but you want to mix it up really well before you decide to put, do, before you start to incorporate your other ingredients, because you want it to get back to a regular consistency. Uh, but you don't want your butter to, like you want it to just be just melted. You don't want it to be like piping hot or anything. So if you do it on the stove top, just be careful because it will melt fast and it will brown pretty quickly. But basically when you get that all mixed together, it's going to start getting back to a regular cons consistency, but very soft. And then you just start putting everything else in. So like I took my vanilla extract and my almond milk and I mixed that together. And so I used half of the amount that I had in powdered sugar. I put that in and then I used half of my liquid then I, you know, incorporated that well, and then I did, you know, the rest of my ingredients. And that's how I came up with my cream cheese frosting. You do need to keep it refrigerated. So I actually have a little bit left over. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing too many more recipes where, or twists to my pancakes, I should say, where I'm using the cream cheese frosting. Um, tomorrow, I actually had something planned for tomorrow. I don't even remember what it was. It was another pancake breakfast, and I don't remember because uh, I came up with this one last minute, but it was another one I had thought about it and I don't remember. So I don't know. It'll just be, you'll see tomorrow when I do one. Hopefully I will have the time, but I want to thank you for joining me and please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.